Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, so hello, everyone. I am Matteo. Um, I come from Berlin, as you can see uh, from this nice picture. You can see our famous TV tower, the Brandenburg Gate, the Reichstag building. Um, so this is my first um, EuroPython and my first Python talk, so wish me luck. Um, <laughs> Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a data scientist. I work as a freelancer uh, in Berlin, and um, I'm a physicist by training. I worked a few years in uh, in academia as a researcher, and then um, decided to I needed a change, and started doing data science. Um, now this talk is fundamentally focused on data vi visualization. So I just want to give you a little bit of context here. Uh, so about, I think, until 10 years ago, this is what I was using uh, when I wanted to plot something and analyze data. Who here knows what GNUplot is? Oh, nice. <laughs> Didn't expect that. That's great. Anyway, it's in the past, luckily. Uh, and nowadays, I'm um, using something that is very common, notebooks and pandas and uh, Matplotlib and whatever extension of that. Um, who here doesn't use Matplotlib? Okay, that's great. Uh, we're gonna go beyond that anyway. Um, so, uh, a little bit of uh, motivation behind uh, this whole talk. So, let's say you're a data scientist and um, you know, you've done all your analysis and uh, you have your notebook ready and you have to show your work, uh, right? And, but, the problem is uh, you have to show it to people who maybe don't know what, uh, what a notebook is, they don't know how to use Python, uh, and maybe you know, they constantly ask you to change things, and you have to go back and change the code and uh, you know, change the plots for very small things. Um, or maybe they want to play with the visualization, and um, you know, uh, at some point if they know what Python is, that becomes quite uh, difficult, or maybe you know you, you just want to show off, uh, or you know maybe you just want to build a portfolio, you want to uh, put out on your website your work, some sort of analysis you've done, um, and so uh, trying to find a way to do this, uh, I was looking for uh, some sort of interactive visualization tool, and um, and so. At some point, I stumbled upon Plotly. Um, so Plotly.py, that is, uh, which is um, an API, a Python API for Plotly.js, which is a JavaScript uh, visualization library, uh, which is open source. It's uh, fully interactive and works with your Jupyter notebooks, uh, which is pretty great. Um, and it's declarative, so you have these objects that you use to, um, to build up your, your visualization. So you have um, a figure that contains everything, and then you have a layout object uh, for your style, your labels, uh, and then you have a specialized object for your scatterers or a bar plot, and so on. Uh, and all these, all these objects are nice because they're basically um, Python dictionaries with a thin wrapper around, so you can always actually use just Python dictionaries if you want. Um, so just to give you an idea, uh, this is a very minimal example uh, of, of Plotly. Uh, who here knows Plotly or uses Plotly? Yeah, that's good. Um, so let me see if I can do this. Maybe I cannot. I'm just trying to show. So let me go back up. Okay, so so this is a basic example of what Plotly does. You know, it's very it's very straightforward. This is just some random data. But what you can see here is that um, you have a, a plot that is fully interactive. You can zoom in, you can hover uh, to see what kind of point you have. You have several tools, you have lasso select, um, and it's pretty nice out of, out of the box, right? Which is, which is quite nice. I also have a more, um, like more elaborate example. 
that is this one. And here you can see that you can interact with, with uh, your plot. You can select your data from the legend. Uh, you can isolate them with a double click. Uh, you know, there's, there's a few features that is very nice to have and you know, you, you always dream of when you use Map, Matplotlib. Um, so going back um, to, to the presentation. So this, this was, was great to find, but then how do you put this in a, in a web page, for example? Uh, so that you, need, you, don't need, you don't actually need to use Python when you wanna uh, explore the visualization. And that's where uh, Dash comes in. So Dash is uh, a product that came out from the same company, Plotly. Um, and uh, I took this from their website and it's a Python framework uh, for building an analytical web application, no JavaScript required. That for me was uh, the, the key word um, because I'm not a web developer, I don't know JavaScript. So uh, it was like a dream come true, right? So the idea is something like shiny for, that is for R and for, but for Python. Um, so just to give you a better idea, um, so Dash has uh, a front end that is, that is based on JavaScript using Plotly and React, uh, and a back end that is based on Flask. Uh, but the good news is you don't need to know any of that because uh, they wrap everything in a Python package that is much easier to use uh, than either. Um, so, this is a very uh, minimal example of, what, of Dash app. So you see you just have a couple inputs. You declare your app here. Uh, you create this object. And then there is layout. There is this layout object that you create using this HTML component. Um, you might recognize div from the HTML tag, HTML tag, sorry. And um, so what they did was to take all HTML tags and create equivalent Python objects. So basically you declare, you build this layout using uh, divs and other HTML tags and you can uh, nest them and, con and concatenate them as you would do in HTML. Um, so, I mean, let me see if I, I wanted to show you again. Oops, where is it? Okay, it disappeared, I guess. Let me see, where is that? What happened here? Here, yeah, so this is what it looks like. It's just a, you know, hello world example. Um, so, um, the main parts of Dash are um, the layout as we've seen that you build up with these HTML components and uh, what they call core components that we're, we're gonna see in a moment. Um, and uh, with callbacks, you connect all the pieces and you create an interactive uh, web page, basically. Um, so the core components are all the buttons, the drop-down menus, the sliders and, and stuff. I have a more elaborate example uh, that I may show you question time if there's time. Um, and, but in this core components uh, set, there is a key component which is graphs that um, is basically a wrapper around Plotly. So you can use it as you would use to, to, to use Plotly objects to, to, do, to visualize your data, just the same way you would use Plotly normally. Um, so this basically comes out of the box. Um, so this is another uh, minimal example. And you see here you have to import uh, these core components and uh, also the graph objects from Plotly as before. Now you have the layout becomes a little bit more, uh, a little bit longer, a little bit more involved. I put here a H1 tag just to you know, get a big title and then uh, you know, you, you have to put the nested item in a list at this point, and the second item is this graph core component that needs to have an ID um, and uh, a figure keyword argument, which is 
which works exactly the same as in Plotly. So here you see we have the same dummy data as before. And what you see is this web page. And again, here we have an interactive graph. And you can uh, zoom in and zoom out and all the nice things. Um, so, um, so the other component, uh, the, mis the last part of Dash that is fundamental is callbacks. So, so with callbacks, we connect all different parts, all different widgets, and we are able to create an interactive uh, experience. Um, I'll give you another uh, example just to show how this works. Um, so we have our layout here, again. We have to import this uh, other part of Dash, which is dependencies, uh, with these two objects, input and output, that will connect the, you know, the parts that we want to use. Uh, so we still have our layout. This time is I use another core component here, which is an input, which means that it's a text input. Uh, and then I have a, an empty div here. And uh, it's important to say that the ID is a required argument because uh, you need to identify every component uniquely. And you need to use this when you declare a callback. As you see here, uh, the way you do this is with this callback uh, decorator uh, where you list your output and your, your inputs uh, with their ID and the component property that you want to connect. So in this case, uh, the output is this empty div and the component property is children, uh, which means basically the content of the div. Um, and the input is my ID, so this one, and the component property is value, which is what you type in. Um, and every time you, the, the, the value of the input is changed, this callback is triggered, and uh, it runs this Python function that returns this string. Uh, and we can see what that means, that every time I write something, it will just modify the text. And um, yeah, that's very neat, I find. Um, and you can, of course, you can evolve this to change graphs and all, com all the type of components that you have. Um, so beyond this, uh, you have um, CSS, you can use CSS classes to, you know, gather a nicer look for your apps. You probably should do that. Um, I'll just uh, show you how easy it is. You just need to append a CSS file here. This is their default recommended, but you can use like Bootstrap or whatever you like. Um, and then the way you you exploit this is in your divs or HTML tags, you have to use this class name, um, keyword argument, which is equivalent of the class um, argument in the HTML tags. Uh, of course, this is the only one that they had to change because otherwise it would clash with the built-in class in Python. Um, so, oops. so just to summarize at this point, uh, the main parts of Dash, so we have HTML components which mirror HTML tags, core components which uh, are the, all the high-level React components, uh, sliders, buttons, menus, um, and graph objects that use Plotly.py, uh, um, just like the library, uh, as usual. And, um, and then we have callbacks with, which connect the pieces and allow for real interactivity. Uh, and then you can use CSS for, for making things prettier. Um, I just want to briefly mention uh, deployment uh, because all this runs very nicely on your computer, but then if you want to actually put it on the internet, uh, at that point you need to know something uh, more than just uh, Dash. Um, the good news is, I'm going to get there. So you can, you can do different things. You, know, you have choices, which is nice. Uh, so first, first thing is just don't do it. 
you know, maybe you donate it. Uh, the other one is know how to use Flask. If you know Flask, it's just exactly the same. Um, the, a very convenient one is to use a platform as a service. So uh, I tried to use Heroku and it's really nice, depending on what kind of application you're doing. If you're doing heavier calculations, maybe this is not ideal, but for very uh, light um, web apps, it should work just fine. Um, or just ask a, ask a friend, you know, or yeah, you could also ask Plotly if you want to do something in your company, you know, Plotly open source everything and they basically leave off consulting work. So they would be happy probably. Um, I'm not affiliated with them, by the way. Um, yeah, so then there's other things I haven't talked about, uh, which is like you can add, you can add external JavaScript code, you can improve performance using caching. Um, there are some optional WebGL graphs uh, that supposedly run faster when you have a lot of data points. Um, you can have live updating uh, visualization um, for sensors, for example. That is a very nice application. You can have authentication. Uh, I mean, that's probably, you know, anything that you can do with Flask, you can probably do with with um, Dash. It, it exposes your Flask server and you can probably use it as you would normally. Um, yeah, so maybe a couple things that are, uh, you know, kind of caveats. Uh, so this won't make you a web designer, unfortunately. I was hoping, but no, you still need to understand how to put things in a, in a web page. Um, there, are some, there are some issues when you have JavaScript errors that they just don't pop up. It's not clear what's going on. Um, that's a bit opaque. Um, it's not clear how well supported offline mode is, even though it can work, and they're working on it, I think. Um, and as I said, deployment, your mileage may vary depending on your needs and expertise, uh, even though I got an okay experience with Heroku. Uh, I can quickly show you something I did, uh, which was this app with Heroku, if it comes up. So, uh, I use the Twitch API, which is a live stream service, uh, mostly focused on gaming, uh, to collect some data. You know, basically what you see is views for different channels, and you know they can be followed by viewers, which is a measure, sort of measure of the popularity. And uh, it's not loading anymore. So, and I did this on on the on Heroku actually, um, on the free tier, which sleeps after 30 minutes. So now it's reloading. Uh, but um, you see, uh, you know, you can use buttons. You can which are supposed to change this graph. Uh, you can, you know, remove, oh man. Yes, oh, that's nice. So you can, you know, select stuff here. You can, that will be plotted on your thing. Maybe you don't want to see this, you remove it. Um, and you can compose, you know, different type of graphs. This, I, you know, I put like the most followed in the last month, you know. This guy has been super popular, this ninja. And uh, this is a logarithmic scale, by the way, so he has been a lot more popular than the rest. Uh, and this is a historic uh, timeline of the views. As you see that he is like far away from the rest. So, I mean, this is just a very simple example and uh, can be definitely improved. But, you know, it gives an idea of what, what you can do. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So thank you for your attention and uh, I'd like to have your question. Any questions? Yeah, wonderful. So um, I wasn't clear if it was straightforward. If you have some uh, input output uh, uh, binding, 
that changes the uh, data that a chart is built from, that the user had uh, zoomed the chart or scrolled it or something. Um, is just the out, is the data updated on the chart, or does the chart reset back to like the the viewport that was the default or such? Uh, so I think that um, so the callback updates the property that you select. So if you select the data, it will update just the data. But you can, I think you can update just the layout, for example. I mean, you can just update parts of the plot. I believe I'm not 100 percent sure, but. Uh, in, the, in this case, I think it replots everything, um, I believe, yeah. But you can, you can do it so you only update certain, certain parts. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, how hard is it to... Um, have a live data stream show up. What do you mean how hard? I, mean, um, I haven't seen any code to uh, like see what it takes to you know, display a web socket or something. So else. the way you do live updates, you, it, basically there's a component that, that has a clock. So ev you can set a, an interval, mm -hmm. and every, uh, every interval it will trigger a callback. And then you can fetch new data and replot your data. So it's, you know, it's very easy. Okay, and you always do like full data updates. You can't do partial data updates. I'm sorry? Can you update, say, only add a data, data point, not flush the whole thing out? And For sure, it? I mean, it's, yeah. it's a Python function, so you can do whatever you want. You can just take the new data, you can, depending on what your data source is, but uh, you know, if you just want the latest, five seconds from your, from your database, you just source that and you can then append to, to whatever you have already. Okay, Yeah. thanks. Sure. Any more questions? No? Okay, then thank you again very much, Matteo.